Hi, it's Essa from The Analyzer. Welcome back. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover how to connect to Google Sheets data using Data Connector. And we'll also learn some of the basics related to data source, such as the metrics and dimension, and also the refresh frequency. So if you come from the previous tutorial, I'm sure you have already got your Data Studio account. But if you are new here, if you want to get your Data Studio account, just go to datastudio.google.com and click use it for free. And then sign in from there using your Gmail. Once you sign in, you will see this landing page that I'm showing on my screen right now. So now I'm on my Data Studio landing page. So at the left hand side, we have a menu which show us the recent reports that we have created, which is the default ones. And then we also have a tab to show the reports that people has shared with you. And here are some of the report that owned by you. And lastly, in the bin tab, we can find all the reports that you have deleted previously. Moving on at the bottom here, you can see there is a templates. So in the template gallery, we can find all the available ready-made templates that you can use right away. So you don't have to create a report from scratch. If you want to use it, you can just click on one of the template and click use template to start from there. If you are interested in using templates for your reports, I do have a video that got you on how to find a report template and how to use it. I will just leave the link in the comments below. So that's about the template. But for this tutorial, we're going to build a report from scratch. So for that purpose, let's create an empty report. Just go to the left menu and you can see this plus button create over here. Just click on the create button. And in the pop-up, let's select report. Now we have a report created. And you can see right away that Google Data Studio has already prompted us to connect to a data. If you look right here, we can see these Google connectors. These are all the connectors created by Data Studio, which is Google. These are all available for free. So in my last episode, I have introduced a few free connectors such as Google Analytics, Google Ads, Google Sheets. And here we actually have more than what I listed in the last video. So feel free to explore it. If you scroll a little bit down, you can see these partner connectors. So partner connectors are actually the third party connectors. The examples are like Supermetrics, Windsor.ai, Funnel, and so on. So there are a lot of third-party connectors that allows you to connect to other data sources that Google doesn't have a native connector for. Since there are so many over here, you probably don't want to go one by one. So here is a search bar that you can just type in the um, data source that you want. So for example, I may want to connect to Facebook ads. So I'll just type Facebook over here and here you will show me all the related data source connector for Facebook. So for example, I have Gladiator, I have Portal Metrics and so on. So if you want to use that, just click on that and follow the instructions by each partner connector. Right now, since we want to connect to Google Sheets data, I'll just click on this Google Sheets. By the way, if you haven't downloaded the data set that we shared in the last chapter, please download it now so that you can follow along. You can also use your own data if you have one. However, I do recommend you to use the same data source if this is the first time you're creating a report in Google Data Studio. So if you haven't already download, just grab the link in the description below and you shall be able to follow along. So now let's get back to the report just now. If you have just downloaded it, you should be able to see it under all items. Just search for the spreadsheet. 
click on that and under the worksheet just select the tab data because this is where our raw data is and here we'll just leave it in the default options however if you can't find the file over here maybe you have too many spreadsheets what you can do is to go to the sample data that you have just downloaded go to the data tab and copy the url just press command c or ctrl c to copy and then go back to here and go to the tab url just paste the link over here also one thing you need to take note of when you are importing a google sheets data is that you need to make sure the first row is the header the column header so for my example the first row is a column header in case you are using your own file if the first row is not the column header you will want to delete the row above the column header and make it the first row alternatively you can just define the range over here so for example if i test um data dictionary since it's on the third row i will just select data dictionary first and then the optional i can put a3 to e16 a3 to e16 so when i click add and there's a prompt just click add to report and here i managed to import all my data since i wonder the data tab instead of the data dictionary let me just switch it back so to edit a data source i'm going to go to resource and then manage edit data source under the actions i'm going to click edit so i can edit the data source and then i'll go to edit connection over here click on that i'm just going to remove the optional range and go back to data so now i'm going to click reconnect so data studio will go on and refresh the entire connection so now it actually detects that these fields are no longer there and these are the new fields that we have in the new connection so now let's click apply and click finish and close it so here because it's still using the previous field i'm just going to cross out so it don't show us the error so usually once the data is connected you will see a table being created randomly by data studio so that means you can already start creating visualization in data studio however the best practice here is actually to always check the data type after you have connected to the data source this is because a, a field's data type tells data studio what kinds of data they can expect when processing that field so this will determine what kind of operations are allowed for these fields say for example if i have a numeric field i'm allowed to sum the entire column to give me a total number however if i have a text field even though the values are all numbers i still can't sum up because data studio already recognize it as a text they don't allow an arithmetic function to be applied to text so that's what you need to take note of and go back to our sample data if you click on this edit data source i can go to the data source edit tab so from here i can see that buyer is recognized as text which is correct and i can go on and check for each ones but here i just want to point out one specific example which is transaction id in this case is recognized as number however transaction id is actually not a number it is a text so to change that i'm going to just click on this number and select text after that i can just click finish 
and you will see now the transaction ID has changed from numeric to text. So now we have learned how to connect to Google Sheets data. Next, I will want to introduce you about metrics and dimension. In Data Studio, dimension refers to the labels that describe the metrics, or simply they are the data categories. Some of the examples are product names, customer names, and date. However, unaggregated numbers are also considered as dimension in Data Studio. So if I go back to Data Studio, you can see that even price, they are all numbers, discount amount also a number, but they are still in green, meaning they are still a dimension. If we decided to aggregate it using a calculated fields, it would then become a matrix. So with that in mind, let's understand what matrix is about. Metrics in Data Studio are referring to quantitative measurements of data. For example, the total revenues, total customers, total items, so are all considered as metrics. And they are always highlighted in blue so you can identify them easily. Another characteristics of a metric in Data Studio is they are always aggregated. So for example, let's say I want to sum up all the price. I can do this, just a simple formula, and I can just rename it to revenue. See, now I have created a revenue based on the column price. So now column price has been aggregated to become a total revenue. And in this case, it's a metric. So if we are referring to the column price, it's a dimension. And if we are referring to the aggregated number of price column, it would be a metric. So just a quick recap of everything we just mentioned just now. You can understand dimension as the text columns. That's for sure a dimension. Second, for the numeric, how you want to identify if they are a dimension or metric, it depends on whether they are aggregated or they haven't aggregated. So if they are being aggregated, they are metrics. If they are not, then they are still a dimension. So I hope that helps. And moving on, we're going to talk about the refresh frequency, which is a very important settings in Data Studio. So to configure our data source again, we will go to this data source and we'll click edit. Here it actually has some extra settings on top. So this is the update frequency that I have been mentioning. This determines how quick Data Studio going to your underlying data source to grab the latest data and update in your report. So if you look closely, here it actually says if you have more frequent updates, it can actually give you fresher data, but it may potentially slow down the performance of your report. Meaning to say your reports will be slow when you're trying to load it. And also one of the downside of increasing the frequency of the updates is that if you are using a paid data services like BigQuery, you may see an increase in the query cost. However, for Google Sheets, it's not a paid services, so we don't have to worry about the query cost. For Google Sheets, by default, it's refreshed every 15 minutes, meaning for every 15 minutes, Data Studio will go to Google Sheets and check if there's any fresh data. If there is, then they'll grab the data and update in your report. So for now, let's remain it as 15 minutes and close the window. That's all for today's tutorial. And before we end this tutorial, let's rename the report so it's easier for us to find it next time. And I'm going to call it Sales Dashboard Sample for Genius Course. So if you like what I do here, do like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so it can reach more people. And that's all. See you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.